If you've ever struggled to make an important business or financial decision because of uh, all the uncertainty and risk involved, then this video is right for you. What if you had a tool to visualize every possible outcome of your decision and pick the best option? That's exactly what decision trees do. Today, we'll dive into this powerful technique and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to calculate it and apply it into your financial analysis. And stick around because I'm not only explaining the theory, I'll show you step by step how to build and calculate a decision tree in Excel to evaluate a real investment opportunity. If you're not interested in the theory and you want to skip to the Excel part, somewhere here is the time code where the Excel example starts, so feel free to just skip ahead and watch this instead. Before we dive into the theory, I want to tell you real quick about Minty Tools for Excel, which is an Excel add-in that I developed to help out with uh, routine daily FP&A tasks. It's available on Gumroad and right now it's 50% uh, off and uh, you can get another 50% of the 50% if you use the promo code in the description box down below. Check it out on the first link below. Let me know what you think and uh, if you decide to get it, you'll be supporting me and the channel and helping me work uh, more on the add-in. Now let's dive in. Let's talk about decision tree. So this is what the decision tree looks like in terms of a structure. So we have our decision point. This is the decision we're trying to make where we're utilizing the decision tree. And then we usually have like all those branches where we have different options. So for example, option one might be invest and option two might be not invest, not spend money. And after those to the right, we have chance notes. So essentially chance notes are something might happen or not. So we would usually get like one probability and what the value would be. This is what we're looking at. And then another probability. And we can even have like three branches with uh, three probabilities. The only important thing to remember is that all the probabilities must sum to one to a hundred percent. So this might be one probability where something happens and that's the end of it, the end note. And then we can have like nested chance notes and so on and so forth. The whole concept is that we're doing a rollback of the calculation. So essentially we're calculating what's the result in each of those end notes and then rolling that back based on the probabilities to try and get to a decision. And uh, I'm going to illustrate that in Excel. So let's take a look at an example in Excel that has pretty much the exact same structure. I went ahead and prepared uh, the example because I didn't want to like waste your time drawing all those lines and uh, everything. So just going to, so let's go over it step by step and see how it works and what's the point and if it can really help us make decision. We're looking uh, at evaluating a potential investment in a new modernized factory for alloy frames to replace our current steel frames factory. The project, the investment, uh, the project will cost us 250,000 and uh, based on the development of the market, we expect to achieve cost savings of either 135,000 per year for five years in favorable market conditions, so if the market grows, or about 100,000 per year for three years in unfavorable conditions. So this is just the cost saving. That's a really important thing about decision trees and about uh, decision making in general is we only care about new costs and new cost savings and new revenue. So we don't care what our revenue would be, we care how much we're going to say. So the different thing that will occur in this situation. And we have the probabilities for those. So we have 85% market growth, 15% market shrinks. And if we look here, we have that. So we have the investment and then we have market growth and market shrink. And before that, we have this anti-dumping. There's a 2% chance that the government may introduce anti-dumping legislation on alloy frames, which will turn our entire project into a complete failure and we'll have to write it off. If this legislation occurs, we essentially lose the 250,000. And if there's no anti-dumping, we can either have the market grows or market shrinks. So 
135K for five years of cost saving, 85% probability and 100K at 15% uh, probability. And you see here on the side that uh, I have calculated for those years, so for all those end nodes, I'm trying to calculate the monetary uh, value. So here it's negative 250,000. In this case, so there's no anti-dumping and the market grows. We expect again to make this investment, but we also expect to get 135,000 of cost saving per year for five years. And here you see I have the weighted average cost of capital, which is a common thing to use for a discount factor when we're calculating discounted cash flows. So I'm discounting those using the formula. So the cash flow divided over one plus my discount factor to the power of the number of the period. And uh, this is how I'm discounting those, summing them here. And I have a net positive effect of 261,000. So we'll spend 250, but we'll gain cost savings of over half a million considering the time value of money. Then if there's no anti-dumping, but the market shrinks, we only have three years worth of cost saving at 100,000 uh, per year. We're doing the same thing, calculating the discounted cash flows. And in this scenario, we're pretty much zeroed out. So we are losing about a thousand bucks considering the time value of money. So this is all about the option to invest, but there's always the option of not to invest. So you should always think about what are all alternatives because we're not only evaluating what happens if we invest. The decision is whether to invest or not. So we can still elect not to invest and then we spent zero on the investment, but we get to another chance point that we have here, factory breakdown. So we expect there's a 35% probability that we'll have a factory breakdown, which will cost us additional 40,000 per year for two years. This is what we have here, two years, negative 40,000 discounted, and we have no investment, obviously, and then we will lose about 70,000 if this happens, if we end up at this end note. And the other uh, is, of course, we do not invest and there's no breakdown. So no cost, no cost savings, nothing. The concept of uh, rolling back essentially uses uh, those probabilities to weigh the expected monetary value at each chance point. So for example, here, we have 85% that we're going to achieve 261,000 cost savings and 15% chance that we're going to lose 1,000. So at this chance point, number four, what we have is we have 0 0.85 multiplied by this thing here, so this end note, and then 15% multiplied by this note, which gives us total weighted monetary result of 222,000 of positive, so of uh, cost savings or positive result at this chance point here. Then at chance point two, we have 2% 2 chance to lose, to be at negative 250,000 and then 98% chance to get to this point here where we have 222,000. So essentially, what I've done here is 98% chance of achieving this chance point four. This is not exactly technically correct. So I guess the better way would have been to here weigh only the benefits without the costs and then here weigh the cost against the benefits. Let's see if this would actually change anything. So we'll remove those here this would give us at chance point four, 85% chance to do that and 15% chance to do that in cost savings. So we get 472. And then at chance point two, we'll have to add, we'll essentially be left with that because there's a 2% chance of doing nothing. And uh, then our invest decision here would be this thing, chance point two, plus the negative 250, so minus 250, to give us 
212,000. Let's see what we had before. Before we had 217,000. And uh, the reason for that is that we essentially netted the benefit here and calculated from there. And because those were at 98%, this made sense. But in reality, we shouldn't bring this 250 to the end because it's part of the entire branch up here. So we have to account for it up here. In a situation like that, the error that we got was pretty small, but in other situations, it might actually skew our analysis. So it's really important to remember that even though this negative 250 would exist in this end note, and we can even put it here for presentation purposes, we have to remember to take account of it in our calculation where it's happening. So it's happening at one, at uh, the decision point. And this is why we should account for it in terms of uh, our calculations at this point and not push it further down the line. Okay, then for chance point three, we have nothing to invest. So we don't have this issue here that we had up here. We have... Uh, 35% chance of having this additional cost and 65% of not having any additional cost. So our calculation is essentially 35% multiplied by the discounted cash flow for the, for the costs of uh, the factory breaking down. And this helps us evaluate the two options. So if we invest, our weighted via the probabilities result is that we're going to actually have so if we invest, we can reliably assume that we'll make around 212,000 of uh, cost savings. And obviously there's no actual scenario where we make exactly this amount of cost saving, but uh, this is the value that we estimate adjusted for risk. So for those chance points and adjusted for the time value of money. And then if we do not invest, we essentially have 35% of uh, having to spend more and not realizing any cost savings. So if we're only basing our decision on uh, this decision tree analysis, the clear winner here is to invest. We should invest. And especially with only a 2% chance of this anti-dumping legislation, we're pretty certain that we're going to realize some cost savings. They may be like zero or they may be quite substantial which is with the higher likelihood but uh, this is the right way to go based on the decision tree analysis decision trees are a really powerful decision making technique and now that you know how to apply them i want to show you a lot more about financial modeling that's why i've recorded a five hour financial modeling course available completely for free right here on youtube and uh, you can check it out in this playlist up here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the first video.